everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor, Joy. Thank you very much for your continued support with your kind questions, comments, booking lessons with me, sending me donations here and also on my Patreon page, volunteering with your time, sending me kind um, messages. I really, really appreciate. So today we're going to talk about pain. <laughs> so particularly neck pain. Um, a lot of violinists, including myself, had experienced some kind of pain, either it's neck, shoulder, wrist, hand, back, name it, all over. Who would have thought playing violin can be such strenuous, so stressful and so hard on the body. This tiny, tiny little instrument can bring joy at wonderful moment, but also if we do not know how to do it properly, it could cause a lot of pain too, physical pain, not just emotional. But I'm not here to scare you, but I'm, um, I'm going to help you to solve those. Let's first go through what the causes could be and I'll show you um, the solutions that you can try yourself and hopefully you'll be free from all this um, pain. Now let's think about it. We're holding a wooden box, literally a box made of wood between our jaw and shoulder. Just the fact that it's quite stressful on the body. On top of that, not only we're twisting our arm, moving both hands differently, and it's totally asymmetrical. It's all on one side, a lot of work, and then right hand has to work the other way too. And a lot of repetition we do for many, many hours. So it's normal for our body to be stressed out. It's normal for our muscles to get tired. It's normal reaction of our body to show some kind of pain. Not that I want you to dismiss it, but just to understand that is why we have to be even more aware of our body's reaction and try to minimize or prevent if we can. Now the first one, uh, uh, it's, it's a more skin issue, more outer part of the neck uh, pain. It's something we call the fiddler's neck or known as a violinist hickey. It's on the left side where you hold your, uh, I'm wearing now turtleneck so you can't really see it. So here where you hold your violin, right there because of a uh, grab and pressure, of, because of friction that we give, we have a little brown spot here and in my case both here and also on my collarbone. So I have two and some have a little more than that one. If you have that one, I, I am quite sensitive hum to humidity um, and I used to get really infected skin and that is why you've seen I use handkerchief all the time and that's something that you can solve it like, like that. Just um, if you're like me who are sensitive to humidity and if you're like me who sweat a lot, I sweat a lot everywhere on my hands too. So handkerchief can be quite handy. Simply just wrap around wherever your skin is touching around the chin rest and shoulder rest so that everywhere where oops your violin is touching is a little um your skin is a little protected not only that also it absorbs a little humidity from your own sweat and also from the air and also just keep the violin clean in general there's a lot of rosin dust building from there so if you're touching that one um it could also irritate the already open wound from holding the violin on your on your violin um, neck and that's something simply keeping it your violin clean clean it everywhere with a cotton cloth not just where the strings are but also where your your neck is touching too now let's go to more common uh, neck pain issue more under the skin even though when we feel like there is a pain in the neck it's not always caused from neck it could be caused from the jaw or from the shoulder or even from back pain being carried all the way to the neck. Just be aware of that one. Let's start with the jaw. When in my early teens I had a, a very strong jaw issue. I could not open my mouth and I did not know why it was. I've been playing violin ever since a little but I never thought it was from violin playing. I could not open my mouth so I went to my orthodontist or my, my dentist and he was saying so try to put your three fingers onto your mouth while opening and then now i can put my whole hand if i want it <laughs> but i could not open my mouth then i could not put three fingers in i could put two fingers barely into my mouth when i opened it but i could not do that 
and he shared with me that I'm not the only violinist who had that issue. A lot of violinists apparently have it. So if you have such thing, it, it's because... So I had that issue and I solved it and I think you can try it yourself. So the cause could be, without wanting it, when we play, we tend to bite our teeth really hard. Because we're working, working hard and while we're working with both hands, we unwantingly we're biting our teeth very hard and then causing all the tension here not only in like my case i could not open my mouth but also it caused also it end up having, i'm having i end up having a neck pain too if that's the case um simply what i did was while playing i simply take a break and open my mouth I don't know if you have seen it. When I play, I tend to open my mouth a little, even though it's not very beautiful looking. But it helps me to relax my jaw and entire upper body in general. Um, there was a professor who suggested to hold a cork, the wine cork, the wine bottle cork, between your mouth while playing. I saw actually, actually a cellist doing it. And you play, and you're not supposed to let uh, the cork fall or you should not leave any strong um, bite prints there. And then you play while holding a cork. Um, I tried it myself. I thought it was a little uh, stress not to lose uh, the cork uh, end up being counterproductive. For me, it worked simply better by trying to open my mouth. It does not have to be wide open but just a little you know a little to try to relax while you play if you can't do it all the time just consciously make yourself open your mouth while playing just a little just relax your jaw and that should already release a lot of pain that's related to neck pain now let's go straight directly caused by neck movement and therefore having neck pain um not only it's hard to hold this wooden box between our neck and shoulder. A lot of violinists, when we play, we get so concentrated and we want to see where our bows are and our violins are, and we end up turning our head so that we can see better. Which makes sense, right? But the thing is, if I take my violin, my neck is totally twisted. So I've been spending like this all the time. Not only that, if I bend my, or if I lower my chin quite a bit, not only I twisted my neck this way, but also squeeze it. So it's basically, even if I'm not playing the violin, that's problem waiting to happen. It is okay for a short time if you turn your head or listen to a violin, having a little, um, moving your body a little, that is fine. The problem happens when you have such position constantly. A lot of um, violinists I see also in my stu uh, in a student, in my studio, they uh, they sound like this and then because we want to see where our bows are we tend to turn our head and press it and then causing all this twisted neck pain problem in that case just be aware generally when you're holding your violin whether you're holding or not you should be able to keep your neck straight so there is a, a collarbone here you should put your violin there and simply lower your chin tiny bit tiny bit and you should be able to hold your violin and that's a proper way of holding your violin yeah so you can turn a bit but try not to have this one holding position another reason why people tend to turn or twist their neck when they're holding it because we think we need to use this this part to press or to hold the violin by doing this we feel like we have to do that but it's not necessary at all in fact, violin is not supposed to meant to hold it in the middle of the, your body, but on the side of your body, on the side of your neck. And that is why often the chin rest is placed on the side of the violin too. So have com get comfortable being a little asymmetrical and then feel your collarbone. See if you can have your violin sit a little diagonally like that. Yeah, and see if you can lower gentle, gently your chin and therefore being able to hold the violin. Whether you have violin or not, your neck should be able to stay straight. Therefore, you can prevent from many, many pain. Talking about violin holding, um, there are a lot of debates whether we need shoulder rest or not. Uh, some people are very defensive when it comes to playing without shoulder rest, saying some big violins play without it, nobody needs shoulder rest, or some people are absolutely must. The answers are not that simple. Um, you should be flexible just like because we all have different length of the neck 
different uh, different muscular level of your shoulder therefore some people with a little shorter neck and a well-built shoulder with a good mus muscular or good something to support um, he or she might be able to hold the violin without any support but if you're like me um, a little longer neck and not so much muscular here then it's good to have a little support whether you have used taller shoulder rest or narrow shoulder rest the all these accessories are there so that our violin playing violin holding is easy not to support somebody's great idea and always keep in mind whatever it, it might have worked with a um, with a certain player it may or may not work especially when it comes to such accessories because it's a very personal and everybody's very different in general you should be able to hold your violin Valley should not be too far out or too much in the center. From the center, about 30 degrees to your left. Keep in mind, you should be able to move in general. And because we want to be able to move our violin, swinging to our left and right, and being able to adjust different angles of the violin, you should not have the shoulder rest too tall or chin rest, but have a little room below and low, uh, uh, under your shoulder so that you can have a little room to adjust yeah and then also if you have to do you can squeeze a little and um, also you should be able to let go of your left hand without squeezing your shoulder too much and that's another one that i'm going to talk about shoulder pain is another one that causes neck pain too because it's all related but some people hold the valley with a too much raised shoulder like this and then it's just already troublesome but just from looking it now if you're in such way see if you can Hold your violin without raising your shoulder. If you cannot solve it, consider getting a shoulder rest or getting a taller shoulder rest. So that gives it fills a gap a bit. Again, you give a little room between your neck and violin still so you can adjust a bit. So that's um, a general guidance in, in uh, when it comes to neck pain or causes and solutions. Now, very, very important one is we have to um, Two things are very important. Uh, we have to make a habit of strengthening our muscle, neck, hand, wrist, arm, back, entire body in general, whatever it's related to violin playing, before practicing or when not practicing. And after practicing, we have to make a habit of doing a little stretches, muscle stretches. There's a lot of things uh, that can be done, but we're gonna focus on neck pain and neck strengthening. So when it comes to neck strengthening exercises, which you should not do after applying, but rather before, it could be right before, but it would be better if you make it as a daily routine. Simply just like you're pushing your hand this way and then you are doing the, you are trying to push it in the, in the opposite direction. So you're trying to create the, a little resistance. Therefore, your muscle has to work a little harder. And then you do both sides, yeah? So make sure you want to push your hand upwards as you put your hand downwards. Therefore, your neck has to work hard. So we're trying to grow a little muscle around the neck. Same thing goes. Put your both hands together, push your hands towards you as you lower your head down. So you're trying to make your neck muscle work a little better. And same thing goes. Put your hands, both hands like that. Push your hand forward as you put your head backwards trying to grow your muscle or strengthen your muscle. This is some kind of exercise you can do to strengthen your neck. Now, after that one, you do a little stretches. Stretches, these are one of the yoga stretches. Simply, now this one, it, the head and the hand goes the same direction. The left hand goes around the head like that and push your hand and allow the neck to stretch. Allow the head to fall as the hand pushes downwards like that and then feel the stretch on your neck and breathe in and out naturally. And this can be done during practicing and after practicing. I would not do before practicing. So during or after. And then the other hand going around and stretches, yeah? Do a couple more times, always breathe in, breathe in with your nose, breathe out with your mouth. Same thing goes, you put hand like this, this time we're gonna push our head forward and allow the head to fall to stretch this neck like this and then now you put hands together stick your thumbs up and then we're going to push our chin backwards and allow this muscle to stretch 
Now, last one is my favorite, is on this part. So we're gonna, there's a muscle here. We're trying to relax that one. So we're gonna put one hand on the side uh, or back or side on the head, one hand in the shoulder. We're trying to open up, open up our shoulder muscle here, like that. And you do both ways. So also here, shoulder, and put your hand on the back of the side and open up like a V shape. And you will soon see your neck muscle gets released from any tension you might have had, might have caused from violin playing elsewhere. This is good thing to, re to be able to relax your muscle. It's a good habit regardless whether you're playing violin or not. Just like that, have a good posture in everyday life. Um, because it's all related to our violin playing, you know, we cannot be hunched over all day or seeing the screen or hunched over and then all of a sudden hopping and when we play violin, we're going to be all straight because we're using the same body. Remember, our body is a part of the instrument. So try to have a good posture in general. When you, um, if you can, when you're busy on the phone or on the computer screen, Try to straighten your back a bit and try to relax your body a bit. Just be aware of a correct neck lining, correct back lining, and a little good posture, not too hunched over, so that you, keep, keep, you can keep enjoying playing the violin and have lots of fun, more fun than pain. Yeah? I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again. And stay well and healthy. Bye-bye.